Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis uccelli et terra, gloria tua, usana in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini. Upon this I was as it were awaked out of a sleep, and I saw, and my sleep was sweet to me. Behold the days come, saith the Lord, 
And I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of men, and with the seed of beasts. And as I have watched over them, to pluck up, and to throw down, and to scatter, and destroy, and afflict, so will I watch over them, to build up, and to plant them, saith the Lord. In those days they shall say no more, The fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the teeth of the children are set on edge. But every one shall die for his own iniquity, every man that shall eat the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold the days shall come, saith the Lord, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant which I made with their fathers, in the day that I took them by the hands to bring them out of the land of Egypt, the covenant which they made void, and I had dominion over them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, after those days, saith the Lord, I will give my law in their bowels, and I will write it in their heart, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least of them even to the greatest, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, who giveth the sun for the light of the day, the order of the moon and of the stars, for the light of the night, who stirreth up the sea, and the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If these ordinances shall fail before me, saith the Lord, then also the seed of Israel shall fail, so as not to be a nation before me for ever. Thus saith the Lord, if the heavens above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I also will cast away all the seed of Israel, for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord from the tower of Hanamel even to the gate of the corner. And the measuring line shall go out farther in his sight upon the hill Gareb, and it shall compass Gotha, and the whole valley of dead bodies and of ashes, and all the country of death, even to the torrent Cedron, into the corner of the horse gate towards the east the holy of the Lord, it shall not be plucked up, and it shall not be destroyed any more forever. Jeremiah's by God's commandment purchases a field of his kinsmen, and prophesies the return of the people out of captivity, and the everlasting covenant God will make with his church. The word that came to Jeremiah is from the Lord in the tenth year of Sedisha's king of Judah, the same as eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time the army of the king of Babylon besieged Jerusalem. And Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the house of the king of Judah. For Sedisha's king of Judah had shut him up, saying, Why dost thou prophesy, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it? And Sedisha's king of Judah shall not escape out of the hand of the Chaldeans, but he shall be delivered into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he shall speak to him mouth to mouth and his eyes shall see his eyes. And he shall lead Sedishas to Babylon, and he shall be there till I visit him, saith the Lord. But if you will fight against the Chaldeans, you shall have no success. And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Behold, Hanamiel the son of Selim thy cousin shall come to thee, saying, Buy thee my field, which is in Anathoth, for it is thy right to buy it, being akin. And Hanamiel my uncle's son came to me, according to the word of the to the entry of the prison, and said me, Buy my field, which is in, in the land of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is thins, and thou art next of kin to possess it. And I understood this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the held of my uncle's son, that is in Anathoth, and I weighed him the money, seven staters, and ten pieces of silver. And I wrote it in a book and sealed it and took witnesses, and I weighed him the money in the balances. And I took the deed of the purchase that was sealed, and the stipulations, and the ratifications with the seals that were on the outside. And I gave the deed of the purchase to Baruch the son of Neri the son of Majus in the sight of Hanamiel my uncle's son, in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase, and before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. And I charged Baruch before them, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, Take these writings, this deed of the purchase that is sealed up, and this deed that is open, and put them in an earthen vessel, that they may continue many days. 
For thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, houses, and fields, and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. And after I had delivered the deed of purchase to Baruch the son of Neri, I prayed to the Lord, saying, Alas, 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 O Lord God, behold thou hast made heaven and earth by thy great power, and thy stretched out arm, no word shall be hard to thee, thou shest mercy unto thousands, and returnest the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them, O most mighty, great, and powerful, the Lord of hosts is thy name great in counsel and incomprehensible in thought, whose eyes are open upon all the ways of the children of Adam, to render unto every one according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his devices. Who hast set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt even until this day, and in Israel, and amongst men, and hast made thee a name as at this day. And hast brought forth thy people Israel, out of the land of Egypt with signs, and with wonders, and with a strong hand and a stretched out arm, and with great terror. And hast given them this land which thou didst swear to their fathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. And they came in, and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice, and they walked not in thy law, and they did not any of those things that thou didst command them to do, and all these evils are come upon them. Behold works are built up against the city to take it, and the city is given into the hands of the Chaldeans, to fight against it by the sword, and the famine, and the pestilence, and what thou hast spoken, is all come to pass, as thou thyself saidst. And sayest thou to me, O Lord God, buy a field for money, and take witnesses, whereas the city is given into the hands of the Chaldeans? And the word of the Lord came to Jeremias, saying, Behold I am the Lord the God of all flesh, shall anything be hard for me? Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold I will deliver this city into the hands of the Chaldeans, and into the hands of the king of Babylon, and they shall take it. And the Chaldeans that fight against this city, shall come and set it on fire, and burn it, with the houses upon whose roofs they offered sacrifice to Baal, and poured out drink offerings to strange gods, to provoke me to wrath. For the children of Israel, and the children of Judah, have continually done evil in my eyes from their youth the children of Israel who even till now provoke me with the work of their hands, saith the Lord. For this city hath been to me a provocation and indignation from the day that they built it, until this day, in which it shall be taken out of my sight. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel, and of the children of Judah, which they have done, provoking me to wrath, they and their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they have turned their backs to me, and not their faces, when I taught them early in the morning, and instructed them, and they would not hearken to receive instruction. And they have set their idols in the house, in which my name is called upon, to defile it. And they have built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the sons of Inam, to consecrate their sons and their daughters to Moloch, which I commanded them not, neither entered it into my heart that they should do this abomination, and cause Judah to sin. And now, therefore, thus saith the Lord the God of Israel to the city, whereof you say that it shall be delivered into the hands of the king of Babylon by the sword, and by famine, and by pestilence, behold I will gather them together out of all the lands to which I have cast them out in my anger, and in my wrath, and in my great indignation, and I will bring them again into this place, and will cause them to dwell securely and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart, and one way, that they may fear me all days, and that it may be well with them, and with their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and will not cease to do them good, and I will give my fear in their heart, that they may not revolt from me. And I will rejoice over them, when I shall do them good, and I will plant them in this land in truth, with my whole heart and with all my soul. For thus saith the Lord, As I have brought upon this people all this great evil, so will I bring upon them all the good that I now speak to them. And fields shall be purchased in this land, whereof you say that it is desolate, because there remaineth neither man nor beast, and it is given into the hands of the Chaldeans. Fields shall be bought for money, and deeds shall be written, and sealed, and witnesses shall be taken, in the land of Benjamin 
and round about Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, and in the cities on the mountains, and in the cities of the plains, and in the cities that are towards the south, for I will bring back their captivity, saith the Lord. God promises reduction from captivity, and other blessings, especially the coming of Christ, whose reign in his church shall be glorious and perpetual. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, who will do, and will form it, and prepare it, the Lord is his name. Cry to me and I will hear thee, and I will show thee great things, and sure things which thou knowest not. For thus saith the Lord the God of Israel to the houses of this city, and to the houses of the king of Judah, which are destroyed, and to the bulwarks, and to the sword. Of them that come to fight with the Chaldeans, and to fill them with the dead bodies of the men whom I have slain in my wrath, and in my indignation, hiding my face from this city because of all their wickedness. Behold I will close their wounds and give them health, and I will cure them, and I will reveal to them the prayer of peace and truth. And I will bring back the captivity of Judah, and the captivity of Jerusalem, and I will build them as from the beginning. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me and I will forgive all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned against me, and despised me. And it shall be to me a name, and a joy, and a praise, and a gladness before all the nations of the earth, that shall hear of all the good things which I will do to them, and they shall fear and be troubled for all the good things, and for all the peace that I will make for them. Thus saith the Lord, There shall be heard again in this place, which you say is desolate, because there is neither man nor beast in the cities of Judah, and without Jerusalem, which are desolate without man, and without inhabitant, and without beast. The prayer of peace, that is, the peace and welfare which they pray for. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Give ye glory to the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth for ever and of them that shall bring their vows into the house of the Lord, for I will bring back the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, There shall be again in this place that is desolate without man, and without beast, and in all the cities thereof, an habitation of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. And in the cities on the mountains, and in the cities of the plains, and in the cities that are towards the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and round about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah shall the flocks pass again under the hand of him that numbereth them, saith the Lord. Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform the good word that I have spoken to the house of Israel, and to the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will make the bud of justice to spring forth unto David, and he shall do judgment and justice in the earth. In those days shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell securely, and this is the name that they shall call him, the Lord our just one. For thus saith the Lord, There shall not be cut off from David a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall there be cut off from the priests and Levites a man before my face to offer holocausts, and to burn sacrifices, and to kill victims continually, and the word of the Lord came to Jeremias, saying, Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant with the day can be made void, and my covenant with the night, that there should not be day and night in their season. There shall not be cut off from David, this was verified in Christ, who is of the house of David, and whose kingdom and his church shall have no end. Neither shall there be cut off from the priests, this promise relates to the Christian priesthood, which shall also continue forever, the functions of which, more especially the great sacrifice of the altar, are here expressed by the name of holocausts, and other offerings of the law, which were so many figures of the Christian sacrifice. Also my covenant with David my servant may be made void, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites and priests my ministers. As the stars of heaven cannot be numbered, nor the sand of the sea be measured, so will I multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites my ministers. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremias, saying, Hast thou not seen what this people hath spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord had chosen, are cast off, and they have despised my people, so that it is no more a nation before them? Thus saith the Lord, 
if I have not set my covenant between day and night, and laws to heaven and earth. Two families, viz., the families of the kings and priests. Surely I will also cast off the seed of Jacob, and of David my servant, so as not to take any of his seed to be rulers of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will bring back their captivity, and will have mercy on them. The prophet foretells that Sedeshah shall fall into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, God's sentence upon the princes and people that had broken his covenant. The word that came to Jeremiah is from the Lord, when Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and all his army, and all the kingdoms of the earth, that were under the power of his hand, and all the people fought against Jerusalem and against all the cities thereof, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Go, and speak to Sedeshah's king of Judah, and say to him, Thus saith the Lord, Behold I will deliver this city into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And thou shalt not escape out of his hand, but thou shalt surely be taken, and thou shalt be delivered into his hand, and thy eyes shall see the eyes of the king of Babylon, and his mouth shall speak with thy mouth, and thou shalt go to Babylon. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O Sedeshah's king of Judah, thus saith the Lord to thee, Thou shalt not die by the sword. But thou shalt die in peace, and according to the burnings of thy fathers, the former kings that were before thee, so shall they burn thee, and they shall mourn for thee, saying, Alas, Lord, for I have spoken the word, saith the Lord. Die in peace, that is, by a natural death. And Jeremiah the prophet spoke all these words to Sedeshah the king of Judah in Jerusalem. And the army of the king of Babylon fought against Jerusalem, and against all the cities of Judah that were left, against Lichas, and against Azachah, for these remained of the cities of Judah, fenced cities. The word that came to Jeremiah is from the Lord, after that king Sedeshah had made a covenant with all the people in Jerusalem making a proclamation, that every man should let his manservant and every man his maidservant, being a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, go free, and that they should not lord it over them, to wit, over the Jews their brethren. And all the princes, and all the people who entered into the covenant, heard that every man should let his manservant, and every man his maidservant go free, and should no more have dominion over them, and they obeyed, and let them go free. But afterwards they turned, and brought back again their servants and their handmaids, whom they had let go free, and brought them into subjection as men servants and maid servants. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord the God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, saying, At the end of seven years, let ye go every man his brother being a Hebrew, who hath been sold to thee, so he shall serve thee six years and thou shalt let him go free from thee, and your fathers did not hearken to me, nor did they incline their ear. And you turned today, and did that which was right in my eyes, in proclaiming liberty every one to his brother, and you made a covenant in my sight, in the house upon which my name is invocated. And you are fallen back, and have defiled my name, and you have brought back again every man his manservant, and every man his maidservant, whom you had let go free and set at liberty, and you have brought them into subjection to be your servants and handmaids. Therefore thus saith the Lord, You have not hearkened to me, in proclaiming liberty every man to his brother and every man to his friend, behold I proclaim a liberty for you, saith the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, and to the famine, and I will cause you to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth. And I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant and have not performed the words of the covenant which they agreed to in my presence, when they cut the calf in two and passed between the parts thereof, the princes of Judah, and the princes of Jerusalem, the eunuchs, and the priests, and all the people of the land that passed between the parts of the calf, and I will give them into the hands of their enemies, and into the hands of them that seek their life, and their dead bodies shall be for me to the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the earth. And Sedeshah the king of Judah, and his princes, I will give into the hands of their enemies, and into the hands of them that seek their lives, and into the hands of the armies of the king of Babylon, which are gone from you. Behold I will command, saith the Lord, and I will bring them again to this city, and they shall fight against it, and take it, and burn it with fire, 
and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation, without an inhabitant. The obedience of the Rechabites condemns the disobedience of the Jews. The reward of the Rechabites. The word that came to Jeremiah is from the Lord in the days of Joachim the son of Jezias king of Judah, saying, Go to the house of the Rechabites, and speak to them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers of the treasures, and thou shalt give them wine to drink. And I took Jezonias the son of Jeremias the son of Habsanias, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, to the treasure house of the sons of Hanan, the son of Jejedelius the man of God, which was by the treasure house of the princes, above the treasure of Majes the son of Selim, who was keeper of the entry. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine, and cups, and I said to them, Drink ye wine. Rechabites, these were of the race of Jethro, father-in-law to Moses. And they answered, We will not drink wine, because John Adad the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, You shall drink no wine, neither you, nor your children, forever, neither shall ye build houses, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyards, nor have any, but you shall dwell in tents all your days that you may live many days upon the face of the earth, in which you are strangers. Therefore we have obeyed the voice of John and Ab the son of Rechab, our father, in all things that he commanded us, so as to drink no wine all our days, neither we, nor our wives, nor our sons, nor our daughters, nor to build houses to dwell in, nor to have vineyard, or field, or seed, but we have dwelt in tents and have been obedient according to all that Jonadab our father commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar our king of Babylon came up to our land, we said, Come, let us go into Jerusalem from the face of the army of the Chaldeans, and from the face of the army of Syria, and we have remained in Jerusalem. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremias, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, Go, and say to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction, to obey my words, saith the Lord? The words of John and Ab the son of Rechab, by which he commanded his sons not to drink wine, have prevailed, and they have drunk none to this day, because they have obeyed the commandment of their father, but I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, and you have not obeyed me. And I have sent to you all my servants the prophets, rising early, and sending and saying, Return ye every man from his wicked way, and make your ways good, and follow not strange gods, nor worship them, and you shall dwell in the land, which I gave you and your fathers, and you have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened to me. So the sons of John and Ab the son of Rechab have constantly kept the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but this people hath not obeyed me. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel. Behold I will bring upon Judah, and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken to them, and they have not heard, I have called to them, and they have not answered me. And Jeremiah is said to the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, because you have obeyed the commandment of John Adab your father, and have kept all his precepts, and have done all that he commanded you. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, There shall not be wanting a man of the race of John Adab the son of Rechab, standing before me for ever. Jeremiah sends Baruch to read his prophecies in the temple, the book is brought to King Joachim, who burns it. The prophet denounces his judgment, and causes Baruch to write a new copy. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Joachim the son of Jezias king of Judah, that this word came to Jeremiah by the Lord saying, Take thee a roll of a book, and thou shalt write in it all the words that I have spoken to thee against Israel and Judah, and against all the nations from the day that I spoke to thee, from the days of Jezias even to this day. If so be, when the house of Judah shall hear all the evils that I purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his wicked way, and I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin. So Jeremy is called Baruch the son of Narius. And Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah is all the words of the Lord, which he spoke to him, upon the roll of a book. And Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up, and cannot go into the house of the Lord. Shut up, not that the prophet was now in prison, 
for the contrary appears from ver, but that he kept himself shut up, by reason of the persecutions he had lately met with. See chap. Go thou and therefore, and read out of the volume, which thou hast written from my mouth, the words of the Lord, in the hearing of all the people in the house of the Lord on the fasting day, and also thou shalt read them in the hearing of all Judah that come out of their cities, if so be they may present their supplication before the Lord, and may return every one from his wicked way, for great is the wrath and indignation which the Lord hath pronounced against this people. And Baruch the son of Narius did according to all that Jeremias the prophet had commanded him, reading out of the volume the words of the Lord in the house of the Lord. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Joachim the son of Jezias king of Judah, in the ninth month, that they proclaimed a fast before the Lord to all the people in Jerusalem, and to all the people that were come together out of the cities of Judah to Jerusalem. And Baruch read out of the volume the words of Jeremias in the house of the Lord in the treasury of Gomarias the son of Saphan the scribe, in the upper court, in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord, in the hearing of all the people. And when Micaiah the sons of Gomarias the son of Saphan had heard out of the book all the words of the Lord, he went down into the king's house to the secretary's chamber, and behold all the princes sat there, Elisama the scribe, and Delias the sons of Simeas, and Elnathan the sons of Achaber and Gomarias the son of Saphan, and Sadishas the son of Hananias, and all the princes. And Micaiah told them all the words that he had heard when Baruch read out of the volume in the hearing of the people. Therefore all the princes sent Judi the son of Nathanias, the son of Selemias, the son of Chusi, to Baruch, saying, Take in thy hand the volume in which thou hast read in the hearing of the people, and come. So Baruch the son of Narias took the volume in his hand, and came to them. And they said to him, Sit down and read these things in our hearing. And Baruch read in their hearing. And when they had heard all the words, they looked upon one another with astonishment, and they said to Baruch, We must tell the king all these words. And they asked him, saying, Tell us how didst thou write all of these words from his mouth? And Baruch said to them, With his mouth he pronounced all these words as if he were reading to me, and I wrote in a volume with ink. And the princes said to Baruch, Go, and hide thee, both thou and Jeremias, and let no man know where you are. And they went into the king into the court, but they laid up the volume in the chamber of Elisama the scribe, and they told all the words in the hearing of the king. And the king sent Judi that he should take the volume, who bringing it out of the chamber of Elisama the scribe, read it in the hearing of the king, and of all the princes that stood about the king. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a hearth before him full of burning coals. And when Judy had read three or four pages, he cut it with a penknife, and he cast it into the fire, that was upon the hearth, till all the volume was consumed with the fire that was on the hearth. And the king and all his servants that heard all these words were not afraid, nor did they rend their garments. But yet Elmethan, and Elias, and Gomeria spoke to the king, not to burn the book, and he heard them not. And the king commanded Jeremiel the sons of Amalek, and Saraias the son of Ezreal, and Selemias the son of Abdeel, to take up Baruch the scribe, and Jeremias the prophet, but the Lord hid them. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremias the prophet, after that the king had burnt the volume, and the words that Baruch had written from the mouth of Jeremias, saying, Take thee again another volume, and write in it all the former words that were in the first volume which Joachim the king of Judah hath burnt. And thou shalt say to Joachim the king of Judah, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast burned that volume, saying, Why hast thou written therein, and said, The king of Babylon shall come speedily, and shall lay waste this land, and shall cause to cease from thence man and beast? Therefore thus saith the Lord against Joachim the king of Judah, He shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out to the heat by day, and to the frost by night. He shall have none, because his son Jochen or Jeconias, within three months after the death of his father, was carried away to Babylon, so that his reign is not worthy of notice. And I will punish him, and his seed and his servants, for their iniquities, and I will bring upon them, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I have pronounced against them, but they have not heard. And Jeremias took another volume, 
and gave it to Baruch the son of Neri as the scribe, who wrote in it from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Joachim the king of Judah had burnt with fire, and there were added besides many more words than had been before. Jeremiah prophesied that the Chaldeans, who had departed from Jerusalem, would return and burn the city. He is cast into prison. His conference with Sedecius. Now King Sedecius the son of Jeshias reigned instead of Jeconias the son of Joachim, whom Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon made king in the land of Judah. But neither he, nor his servants, nor the people of the land did obey the words of the Lord, that he spoke in the hand of Jeremias the prophet. And King Sedecius sent Juchel the sons of Selemias, and Sophonias the son of Majas the priest to Jeremias the prophet, saying, Pray to the Lord our God for us. Now Jeremias walked freely in the midst of the people, for they had not as yet cast him into prison. And the army of Pharaoh was come out of Egypt, and the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem, hearing these tidings, departed from Jerusalem. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremias the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord the God of Israel, Thus shall you say to the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of me, Behold the army of Pharaoh, which is come forth to help you, shall return into their own land, into Egypt. And the Chaldeans shall come again, and fight against this city, and take it, and burn it with fire. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not your souls, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart and go away from us, for they shall not go away. But if you should even beat all the army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there should be left of them some wounded men, they shall rise up every man from his tent, and burn this city with fire. Now when the army of the Chaldeans was gone away from Jerusalem, because of Pharaoh's army, Jeremias went forth out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin, and to divide a possession there in the presence of the citizens. And when he was come to the gate of Benjamin, the captain of the gate, who was there in his turn, was one named Jerias, the son of Selemias, the son of Hananias, and he took hold of Jeremias the prophet, saying, Thou art fleeing to the Chaldeans. And Jeremias answered, It is not so, I am not fleeing to the Chaldeans. But he hearkened not to him, so Jerias took Jeremias and brought him to the princes. Wherefore the princes were angry with Jeremias, and they beat him, and cast him into the prison that was in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for he was chief over the prison. So Jeremias went into the house of the prison, and into the dungeon, and Jeremias remained there many days. Then Sedecius the king, sending, took him, and asked him secretly in his house, and said, Is there, thinkest thou, any word from the Lord? And Jeremias said, There is. And he said, Thou shalt be delivered into the hands of the king of Babylon. And Jeremias said to king Sedecius, In what have I offended against thee, or thy servants, or thy people, that thou hast cast me into prison? Where are your prophets that prophesied to you, and said, the king of Babylon shall not come against you, and against this land? Now therefore hear, I beseech thee, my lord the king, let my petition be accepted in thy sight, and send me not back into the house of Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. Then king Sedecius commanded that Jeremias should be committed into the entry of the prison, and that they should give him daily a piece of bread, beside broth, till all the bread in the city were spent, and Jeremias remained in the entry of the prison. The prophet at the instance of the great man is cast into a filthy dungeon, he is drawn out by Abdemilech, and has another conference with the king. Now Saphatius the sons of Mathan, and Jedelius the son of Fashur, and Juchil the son of Selemias, and Fashur the son of Melchias heard the words that Jeremias spoke to all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Whosoever shall remain in this city, shall die by the sword, and by famine, and by pestilence. But he that shall go forth to the Chaldeans, shall live, and his life shall be safe, and he shall live. Thus saith the Lord, This city shall surely be delivered into the hand of the army of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And the princes said to the king, We beseech thee that this man may be put to death, for on purpose he weakeneth the hands of the men of war, that remain in this city, and the hands of the people, speaking to them according to these words. For this man seeketh not peace to this people, but evil. And King Sedecius said, Behold he is in your hands, for it is not lawful for the king to deny you anything. 
Then they took Jeremias and cast him into the dungeon of Melchias the sons of Amalek, which was in the entry of the prison, and they let down Jeremias by ropes into the dungeon, wherein there was no water, but mire. And Jeremias sunk into the mire. Now Abdemelech the Ethiopian, and eunuch that was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremias in the dungeon, but the king was sitting in the gate of Benjamin. And Abdemelech went out of the king's house, and spoke to the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done against Jeremias the prophet, casting him into the dungeon to die there with hunger, for there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded Abdemelech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from hence thirty men with thee, and draw up Jeremias the prophet out of the dungeon, before he die. So Abdemelech taking the men with him, went into the king's house that was under the storehouse, and he took from thence old rags, and old rotten things, and he led them down by cords to Jeremias into the dungeon. And Abdemelech the Ethiopian said to Jeremias, Put these old rags and these rent and rotten things under thy arms, and upon the cords, and Jeremias did so. And they drew up Jeremias with the cords, and brought him forth out of the dungeon. And Jeremias remained in the entry of the prison. And King Sedecius sent, and took Jeremias the prophet to him to the third gate, that was in the house of the Lord. And the king said to Jeremias, I will ask thee a thing, hide nothing from me. Then Jeremias said to Sedecius, If I shall declare it to thee, wilt thou not put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, thou wilt not hearken to me. Then King Sedecius swore to Jeremias, in private, saying, As the Lord liveth, that made us this soul, I will not put thee to death, nor will I deliver thee into the hands of these men that seek thy life. And Jeremias said to Sedecius, Thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, If thou wilt take a resolution and go out to the princes of the king of Babylon, thy soul shall live, and this city shall not be burnt with fire, and thou shalt be safe, and thy house. But if thou wilt not go out to the princes of the king of Babylon, this city shall be delivered into the hands of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and thou shalt not escape out of their hands. And King Sedecius said to Jeremias, I am afraid because of the Jews that are fled over to the Chaldeans, lest I should be delivered into their hands, and they should abuse me. But Jeremias answered, They shall not deliver thee, hearken, I beseech thee, to the word of the Lord which I speak to thee, and it shall be well with thee, and thy soul shall live. But if thou wilt not go forth, this is the word which the Lord hath shown me, Behold all the women that are left in the house of the king of Judah, shall be brought out to the princes of the king of Babylon, and they shall say, Thy men of peace have deceived thee, and have prevailed against thee, they have plunged thy feet in the mire, and in a slippery place, and they have departed from thee. And all thy wives, and thy children shall be brought out to the Chaldeans, and thou shalt not escape their hands, but thou shalt be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn the city with fire. Then Sedecius said to Jeremias, Let no man know these words, and thou shalt not die. But if the princes shall hear that I have spoken with thee, and shall come to thee, and say to thee, Tell us what thou hast said to the king, hide it not from us, and we will not kill thee, and also what the king said to thee. Thy men of peace, very pacifici tui. That is thy false friends promising thee peace and happiness, and by their evil counsels involving thee in misery. Thou shalt say to them, I presented my supplication before the king, that he would not command me to be carried back into the house of Jonathan, to die there. So all the princes came to Jeremias, and asked him, and he spoke to them according to all the words that the king had commanded him, and they left him for nothing had been heard. But Jeremias remained in the entry of the prison, until the day that Jerusalem was taken, and it came to pass that Jerusalem was taken. After two years siege Jerusalem is taken. Sedecius is carried before Nebuchadnezzar, who kills his sons in his sight, and then puts out his eyes. Jeremias is set at liberty. In the ninth year of Sedecius king of Judah, in the tenth month, came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and all his army to Jerusalem, and they besieged it. And in the eleventh year of Sedecius, in the fourth month, the fifth day of the month, the city was opened. And all the princes of the king of Babylon came in, and sat in the middle gate, near Eagle, Sirezer, Samgarnabu, Sarsachim, Rabzers, near Eagle, Sirezer, 
Remag, and all the rest of the princes of the king of Babylon. And when Sedecius the king of Judah and all the men of war saw them, they fled, and they went forth in the night out of the city by the way of the king's garden, and by the gate that was between the two walls, and they went, out to the way of the desert. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after them, and they took Sedecius in the plain of the desert of Jericho, and when they had taken him, they brought him to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon to Reblatha, which is in the land of Amath, and he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Sedecius, in Reblatha, before his eyes, and the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. He also put out the eyes of Sedecius, and bound him with fetters, to be carried to Babylon. And the Chaldeans burnt the king's house, and the houses of the people with fire, and they threw down the wall of Jerusalem. And Nebuzard and the general of the army carried away captive to Babylon the remnant of the people that remained in the city, and the fugitives that had gone over to him, and the rest of the people that remained. But Nebuzard and the general left some of the poor people that had nothing at all, in the land of Judah, and he gave them vineyards, and cisterns at that time. Now Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had given charge to Nebuzard and the general concerning Jeremias, saying, Take him and set thy eyes upon him, and do him no harm, but as he hath a mind, so do with him. Therefore Nebuzard and the general sent, and Nebuchadnezzar, and Rabzars, and Neregal, and Surizer, and Remag, and all the nobles of the king of Babylon, sent, and took Jeremias out of the court of the prison, and committed him to Godolius the son of Ahakam the son of Saphan, that he might go home, and dwell among the people. But the word of the Lord came to Jeremias, when he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Go, and tell Abdamelech the Ethiopian, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, Behold I will bring my words upon this city unto evil, and not unto good, and they shall be accomplished in thy sight in that day. And I will deliver thee in that day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt not be given into the hands of the men whom thou fearest, but delivering, I will deliver thee and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be saved for thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord. Jeremias remains with Godolius the governor, who receives all the Jews that resort to him. The word that came to Jeremias from the Lord, after that Nebuzard and the general had let him go from Ramah, when he had taken him, being bound with chains, among all them that were carried away from Jerusalem and Judah, and were carried to Babylon. And the general of the army taking Jeremias, said to him, The Lord thy God hath pronounced this evil upon this place, and he hath brought it, and the Lord hath done as he hath said, because you have sinned against the Lord, and have not hearkened to his voice, and this word is come upon you. Now then behold I have loosed thee this day from the chains which were upon thy hands, if it please thee to come with me to Babylon, come, and I will set my eyes upon thee. But if it do not please thee to come with me to Babylon, stay here, behold all the land is before thee, as thou shalt choose, and whither it shall please thee to go, thither go. And come not with me, but dwell with Godolius the son of Ahakam the son of Saphan, whom the king of Babylon hath made governor over the cities of Judah, dwell therefore with him in the midst of the people, or whithersoever it shall please thee to go, go. And the general of the army gave him victuals and presents and let him go. And Jeremias went to Godolius the son of Ahakam to Masphath, and dwelt with him in the midst of the people that were left in the land. And when all the captains of the army that were scattered through the countries, they and their companions, had heard that the king of Babylon had made Godolius the son of Ahakam governor of the country, and that he had committed unto him men and women, and children, and of the poor of the land, them that had not been carried away captive to Babylon. They came to Godolius to Masphath, and Ismael the son of Nathanias, and Johanan, and Jonathan, the sons of Kuri, and Sarias the son of Thanhumeth, and the children of Aphi, that were of Netophathi, and Jezonias the son of Makati, they and their men. And Godolius the son of Ahakam the son of Saphan swore to them and to their companions, saying, Fear not to serve the Chaldees, dwell in the land, and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. Behold I dwell in Masphath, that I may answer the commandment of the Chaldeans that are sent to us, but as for you, gather ye the vintage, and the harvest, and the oil, 
and lay it up in your vessels, and abide in your cities which you hold. Moreover all the Jews that were in Moab, and among the children of Ammon, and in Edom, and in all the countries, when they heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant in Judea, and that he had made Godolius the son of Ahakam the son of Saphan ruler over them, all the Jews, I say, returned out of all the places to which they had fled, and they came into the land of Judah to Godolius to Masphath, and they gathered wine, and a very great harvest. Then Johanan the son of Kuri, and all the captains of the army, that had been scattered about in the countries, came to Godolius to Masphath. And they said to him, Know that Baalus the king of the children of Ammon hath sent his Maha the son of Nathanias to kill thee. And Godolius the son of Ahakam believed them not. But Johanan the son of Kuri, spoke to Godolius privately in Masphath, saying, I will go, and I will kill his Maha the son of Nathanias, and no man shall know it, lest he kill thee, and all the Jews be scattered, that are gathered unto thee and the remnant of Judah perish, and Godolius the son of Ahakam said to Johanan the son of Cares, Do not this thing, for what thou sayest of Ismael is false. Godolius is slain, the Jews that were with him are apprehensive of the Chaldeans. And it came to pass in the seventh month, that Ismael the son of Nathanias, the sons of Elisama of the royal blood, and the nobles of the king, and ten men with him, came to Godolius the son of Ahakam into Masphath and they ate bread there together in Masphath. And Ismael the son of Nathanias arose, and the ten men that were with him, and they struck Godolius the son of Ahakam, the son of Saphan with the sword, and slew him whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Ismael slew also all the Jews that were with Godolius in Masphath, and the Chaldeans that were found there, and the soldiers. And on the second day after he had killed Godolius, no man yet knowing it, there came some from the Sycom, and from the Silo, and from Samaria, fourscore men, with their beards shaven, and their clothes rent, and mourning, and they had offerings and incense in their hand, to offer in the house of the Lord. And Ismael the son of Nathanias went forth from Masphath to meet them, weeping all along as he went, and when he had met them, he said to them, Come to Godolius, the son of Ahakam. And when they were come to the midst of the city, Ismael the son of Nathanias, slew them, and cast them into the midst of the pit, he and the men that were with him. But ten men were found among them, that said to Ismael, Kill us not, for we have stores in the field, of wheat, and barley, and oil, and honey. And he forbore, and slew them not with their brethren. And the pit into which Ismael cast all the dead bodies of the men whom he slew because of Godalius, is the same that King Asa made for fear of Bausa the king of Israel, the same did Ismael the son of Nathanias fill with them that were slain. Then Ismael carried away captive all the remnant of the people that were in Masphath, the king's daughters, and all the people that remained in Masphath, whom Nebuzard and the general of the army had committed to Godolius the son of Ahakam. And Ismael the son of Nathanias took them, and he departed, to go over to the children of Ammon. But Johanan the son of Kuri, and all the captains of the fighting men that were with him, heard of the evil that Ismael the son of Nathanias had done. And taking all the men, they went out to fight against Ismael the son of Nathanias, and they found him by the great waters that are in Gabon. And when all the people that were with Ismael, had seen Johanan the son of Kuri, and all the captains of the fighting men that were with him, they rejoiced. And all the people whom Ismael had taken, went back to Masphath and they returned and went to Johanan the son of Kuri. But Ismael the son of Nathanias fled with eight men, from the face of Johanan, and went to the children of Ammon. Then Johanan the son of Kuri, and all the captains of the soldiers that were with him, took all the remnant of the people whom they had recovered from Ismael the son of Nathanias, from Masphath, after that he had slain Godolius the son of Ahakam, valiant men for war, and the women, and the children, and the eunuchs whom he had brought back from Gadon, and they departed, and sat as sojourners in Chanam, which is near Bethlehem, in order to go forward, and enter into Egypt, from the face of the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them, because Ismael the son of Nathanias had slain Godolius the son of Ahakam, whom the king of Babylon had made governor in the land of Judah. Jeremias assures the remnant of the people, that if they will stay in Judah, they shall be safe, but if they go down into Egypt, 
they shall perish. Then all the captains of the warriors, and Johanan the son of Kuri, and Jezonias the son of Oseias, and the rest of the people from the least to the greatest came near, and they said to Jeremias the prophet, Let our supplication fall before thee, and pray thou for us to the Lord thy God for all this remnant, for we are left but a few of many, as thy eyes do behold us. And let the Lord thy God show us the way by which we may walk, and the thing that we must do. And Jeremias the prophet said to them, I have heard you, behold I will pray to the Lord your God according to your words, and whatsoever thing he shall answer me, I will declare it to you, and I will hide nothing from you. And they said to Jeremias, The Lord be witness between us of truth and faithfulness, if we do not according to everything for which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us. Whether it be good or evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom me send thee, that it may be well with us when we shall hearken to the voice of the Lord our God. Now after ten days, the word of the Lord came to Jeremias. And he called Johanan the son of Kuri, and all the captains of the fighting men that were with him, and all the people from the least to the greatest. And he said to them, Thus saith the Lord the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your supplications before him, if you will be quiet and remain in this land, I will build you up, and not pull you down, I will plant you, and not pluck you up, for now I am appeased for the evil that I have done to you. Good or evil, that is, agreeable or disagreeable. I am appeased for the evil that I have done to you, that is, I am appeased, as I have sufficiently punished you, and now I am reconciled with you. Fear not because of the king of Babylon, of whom you are greatly afraid, fear him not, saith the Lord, for I am with you, to save you, and to deliver you from his hand. And I will show mercies to you, and will take pity on you, and will cause you to dwell in your own land. But if you say, We will not dwell in this land, neither will we hearken to the voice of the Lord our God, saying, No, but we will go into the land of Egypt, where we shall see no war nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor suffer hunger, and there we will dwell. For this now hear the word of the Lord, ye remnant of Judah, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, if you set your faces to go into Egypt, and enter and to dwell there. The sword which you fear, shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine, whereof you are afraid, shall cleave to you in Egypt, and there you shall die. And all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt, to dwell there, shall die by the sword, and by famine, and by pestilence, none of them shall remain, nor escape from the face of the evil that I will bring upon them. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my indignation hath been kindled against the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my indignation be kindled against you, when you shall enter into Egypt, and you shall be an execration and an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach, and you shall see this place no more. This is the word of the Lord concerning you, O ye remnant of Judah, go ye not into Egypt, know certainly that I have adjured you this day. For you have deceived your own souls, for you sent me to the Lord our God, saying, Pray for us to the Lord our God, and according to all that the Lord our God shall say to thee, so declare unto us, and we will do it. And now I have declared it to you this day, and, you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God, with regard to all the things for which he hath sent me to you. Now therefore know certainly that you shall die by the sword, and by famine, and by pestilence in the place to which you desire to go to dwell there. The Jews, contrary to the orders of God by the prophet, go into Egypt, carrying Jeremias with them. He foretells the devastation of that land by the king of Babylon. And it came to pass, that when Jeremias had made an end of speaking to the people all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, all these words, Azarias the son of Oseias, and Johanan the son of Kuri, and all the proud men, made answer, saying to Jeremias, Thou tellest a lie, the Lord our God hath not sent thee, saying, Go not into Egypt, to dwell there. But Baruch the son of Neria set a theon against us to deliver us into the hands of the Chaldeans, to kill us, and to cause us to be carried away captives to Babylon. So Johanan the son of Kuri, and all the captains of the soldiers, and all the people, obeyed not the voice of the Lord, to remain in the land of Judah.
but Johanan the son of Kuri, and all the captains of the soldiers took all the remnant of Judah, that were returned out of all nations, to which they had before been scattered, to dwell in the land of Judah. Men, and women, and children, and the king's daughters, and every soul, which Nebuzaradan the general had left with Godolius the son of Ahikam the son of Saphan, and Jeremias the prophet, and Baruch the son of Narius. And they went into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, and they came as far as Taphnis. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremias in Taphnis, saying, Take great stones in thy hand, and thou shalt hide them in the vault that is under the brick wall at the gate of Pharaoh's house in Taphnis, in the sight of the men of Judah. And thou shalt say to them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, Behold I will send, and take Nebuchadnezzar or the king of Babylon my servant, and I will set his throne over these stones which I have hid, and he shall set his throne over them. And he shall come and strike the land of Egypt, such as are for death, to death, and such as are for captivity, to captivity, and such as are for the sword, to the sword. And he shall kindle a fire in the temples of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them, and he shall carry them away captives, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd putteth on his garment, and he shall go forth from thence in peace. And he shall break the statues of the house of the sun, that are in the land of Egypt, and the temples of the gods of Egypt he shall burn with fire. The word that came to Jeremias, concerning all the Jews that dwelt in the land of Egypt, dwelling in Magdal, and in Taphnis, and in Memphis, and in the land of Fatchers, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, You have seen all this evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, and upon all the cities of Judah, and behold they are desolate this day, and there is not an inhabitant in them, because of the wickedness which they have committed, to provoke me to wrath, and to go and offer sacrifice, and worship other gods, which neither they, nor you, nor your fathers knew. And I sent to you all my servants the prophets, rising early, and sending, and saying, Do not commit this abominable thing, which I hate. But they heard not, nor inclined their ear to turn from their evil ways, and not to sacrifice to strange gods. Wherefore my indignation and my fury was poured forth, and was kindled in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are turned to desolation and waste, as at this day. And now thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, why do you commit this great evil against your own souls, that there should die of you man and woman, child and suckling out of the midst of Judah, and no remnant should be left you, in that you provoke me to wrath with the works of your hands, by sacrificing to other gods in the land of Egypt, into which you are come to dwell there, and that you should perish, and be a curse, and a reproach to all the nations of the earth? Have you forgotten the evils of your fathers, and the evils of the kings of Judah, and the evils of their wives, and your evils, and the evils of your wives, that they have done in the land of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem? They are not cleansed even to this day, neither have they feared, nor walked in the law of the Lord, nor in my commandments, which I set before you and your fathers. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, Behold I will set my face upon you for evil, and I will destroy all Judah. And I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt, and to dwell there, and they shall be all consumed in the land of Egypt, they shall fall by the sword, and by the famine, and they shall be consumed from the least even to the greatest, by the sword, and by the famine shall they die, and they shall be for an execration, and for a wonder, and for a curse, and for a reproach. And I will visit them that dwell in the land of Egypt, as I have visited Jerusalem by the sword, and by famine, and by pestilence. And there shall be none that shall escape, and remain of the remnant of the Jews that are gone to sojourn in the land of Egypt, and that shall return into the land of Judah, to which they have a desire to return to dwell there, there shall none return but they that shall flee. Then all the men that knew that their wives sacrificed to other gods, and all the women of whom there stood by a great multitude, and all the people of them that dwelt in the land of Egypt and Fatchers, answered Jeremias, saying, As for the word which thou hast spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken to thee, but we will certainly do every word that shall proceed out of our own mouth, to sacrifice to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings to her, as we and our fathers have done, 
our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, and we were filled with bread, and it was well with us, and we saw no evil. But since we left off to offer sacrifice to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings to her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword, and by famine. And if we offer sacrifice to the Queen of Heaven, and pour out drink offerings to her, did we make cakes to worship her, to pour out drink offerings to her, without our husbands? And Jeremiah spoke to all the people, to the men, and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, The Queen of Heaven, the moon, which they worshipped under this name. Was it not the sacrifice that you offered in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem? you and sour fathers, your kings, and your princes, and the people of the land, which the Lord hath remembered, and hath it not entered into his heart, so that the Lord could no longer bear, because of the evil of your doings, and because of the abominations which you have committed, therefore your land is become a desolation, and an astonishment, and a curse, without an inhabitant, as at this day. Because you have sacrificed to idols, and have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have not walked in his law, and in his commandments, and in his testimonies, therefore are these evils come upon you, as at this day. And Jeremiah said to all the people, and to all the women, Hear ye the word of the Lord, all Judah, you that dwell in the land of Egypt, thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, saying, You and your wives have spoken with your mouth, and fulfilled with your hands, saying, let us perform our vows which we have made, to offer sacrifice to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings to her, you have fulfilled your vows, and have performed them indeed. Therefore hear ye the word of the Lord, all Judah, you that dwell in the land of Egypt, behold I have sworn by my great name, saith the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah, in the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. Behold I will watch over them for evil, and not for good, and all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt, shall be consumed, by the sword, and by famine, till there be an end of them. And a few men that shall flee from the sword, shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah, and all the remnant of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt to dwell there, shall know whose word shall stand, mine, or theirs. And this shall be a sign to you, saith the Lord that I will punish you in this place, that you may know that my words shall be accomplished indeed against you for evil. Thus saith the Lord, Behold I will deliver Pharaoh a free king of Egypt into the hand of his enemies, and into the hand of them that seek his life, as I delivered Sadish's king of Judah into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon his enemy, and that sought his life. The Prophet Comforts Baruch in His Affliction the word that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch the son of Narius, when he had written these words in a book, out of the mouth of Jeremiah, in the fourth year of Joachim the son of Jezias king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord the God of Israel to thee, Baruch, thou hast said, Woe is me, wretch that I am, for the Lord hath added sorrow to my sorrow, I am wearied with my groans, and I find no rest. Thus saith the Lord, Thus shalt thou say to him, Behold, them whom I have built, I do destroy, and them whom I have planted, I do pluck up, and all this land. And dost thou seek great things for thyself? Seek not, for behold I will bring evil upon all flesh, saith the Lord. But I will give thee thy life, and save thee in all places whithersoever thou shalt go. A prophecy against Egypt. The Jews shall return from captivity. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah is the prophet against the Gentiles, against Egypt, against the army of Pharaoh Nechal king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates and Charchemes, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon defeated, in the fourth year of Joachim the son of Jeshias king of Judah. Prepare ye the shield and buckler, and go forth to battle. Harness the horses, and get up, ye horsemen, stand forth with helmets, furbish the spears, put on coats of mail. What then? I have seen them dismayed, and turning their backs, their valiant ones slain, they fled apace, and they looked not back, terror was round about, saith the Lord. Let not the swift flee away, nor the strong think to escape, they are overthrown, and fallen down, towards the north by the river Euphrates. 
Who is this that cometh up as a flood, and his streams swell like those of rivers? Egypt riseth up like a flood, and the waves thereof shall be moved as rivers, and he shall say, I will go up and will cover the earth, I will destroy the city, and its inhabitants. Get ye up on horses, and glory in chariots, and let the valiant men come forth, the Ethiopians, and the Libyans that hold the shield, and the Lydians that take, and shoot arrows. For this is the day of the Lord the God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may revenge himself of his enemies, the sword shall devour, and shall be filled, and shall be drunk with their blood, for there is a sacrifice of the Lord God of hosts in the north country, by the river Euphrates. Go up into Galad, and take balm, O virgin daughter of Egypt, in vain dost thou multiply medicines, there shall be no cure for thee. The nations have heard of thy disgrace, and thy howling hath filled the land, for the strong hath stumbled against the strong, and both are fallen together. The word that the Lord spoke to Jeremy is the prophet, how Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon should come and strike the land of Egypt, declare ye to Egypt, and publish it in Magdal and let it be known in Memphis, and in Taphnis, say ye, Stand up, and prepare thyself, for the sword shall devour all round about thee. Why are thy valiant men come to nothing? They stood not, because the Lord hath overthrown them. He hath multiplied them that fall, and one hath fallen upon another, and they shall say, Arise, and let us return to our own people, into the land of our nativity, from the sword of the dove, Call ye the name of Pharaoh king Egypt, a tumult time hath brought. As I live, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts, as Thabar is among the mountains, and as Carmel by the sea, so shall he come. Furnish thyself to go into captivity, thou daughter inhabitant of Egypt, for Memphis shall be made desolate, and shall be forsaken and uninhabited. Egypt is like a fair and beautiful heifer, there shall come from the north one that shall goad her. The dove. See the annotation on Chap, Ver. Her hirelings also that lived in the midst of her, like fatted calves are turned back, and are fled away together, and they could not stand, for the day of their slaughter is come upon them, the time of their visitation. Her voice shall sound like brass, for they shall hasten with an army, and with axes they shall come against her, as hewers of wood. They have cut down her forest, saith the Lord, which cannot be counted. They are multiplied above locusts, and are without number. The daughter of Egypt is confounded, and delivered into the hand of the people of the north. The Lord of hosts the God of Israel hath said, Behold I will visit upon the tumult of Alexandria, and upon Pharaoh, and upon Egypt, and upon her gods, and upon her kings, and upon Pharaoh, and upon them that trust in him. Visit upon, that is, punish Dotibid. Alexandria in the Hebrew, No, which was the ancient name of the city, to which Alexander gave afterwards the name of Alexandria. And I will deliver them into the hand of them that seek their lives, and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and into the hand of his servants, and afterwards it shall be inhabited, as in the days of old, saith the Lord. And thou my servant Jacob, fear not and be not thou dismayed, O Israel, for behold I will save thee from afar off, and thy seed out of the land of thy captivity, and Jacob shall return and be at rest, and prosper, and there shall be none to terrify him. And thou, my servant Jacob, fear not, saith the Lord, because I am with thee, for I will consume all the nations to which I have cast thee out, but thee I will not consume, but I will correct thee in judgment, neither will I spare thee as if thou wert innocent. A prophecy of the desolation of the Philistines, of Tyre, Sidon. Gaza, and Ascalon. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremy is the prophet against the people of Palestine, before Pharaoh took Gaza. Thus saith the Lord, Behold there come up waters out of the north, and they shall be as an overflowing torrent, and they shall cover the land, and all that is therein, the city and the inhabitants thereof, then the men shall cry, and all the inhabitants of the land shall howl, at the noise of the marching of arms, and of his soldiers, at the rushing of his chariots, and the multitude of his wheels. The fathers have not looked back to the children, for feebleness of hands, because of the coming of the day, in which all the Philistines shall be laid waste, and Tyre and Sidon shall be destroyed, with all the rest of their helpers. 
for the Lord hath wasted the Philistines, the remnant of the Isle of Cappadocia. Baldness is come upon Gaza, Asquelon hath held her peace with the remnant of their valley, how long shalt thou cut thyself? O thou sword of the Lord, how long wilt thou not be quiet? Go into thy scabbard, rest, and be still. How shall it be quiet, when the Lord hath given it a charge against Tascalon, and against the countries thereof by the seaside, and there hath made an appointment for it? A prophecy of the desolation of Moab for their pride, but their captivity shall at last be released. Against Moab thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, Woe to Nabo, for it is laid waste, and confounded, carry it Ham is taken, the strong city is confounded and hath trembled. There is no more rejoicing in Moab over Hesebon, they have devised evil. Come, and let us cut it off from being a nation. Therefore shalt thou in silence hold thy peace, and the sword shall follow thee. A voice of crying from more own name, waste, and great destruction. Moab is destroyed, proclaim a cry for her little ones. For by the ascent of Luith shall the mourner go up with weeping, for in the descent of Oro name the enemies have heard a howling of destruction. Flee, save your lives, and be as heath in the wilderness. For because thou hast trusted in thy bulwarks, and in thy treasures, thou also shalt be taken, and Shamel shall go into captivity, his priests, and his princes together. And the spoiler shall come upon every city, and no city shall escape, and the valleys shall perish, and the plains shall be destroyed, for the Lord hath spoken, Give a flower to Moab, for in its flower it shall go out, and the cities thereof shall be desolate, and uninhabited. Cursed be he that doth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that withholdeth his sword from blood. Chamos, the idol of the Moabites. Deceitfully, in the Greek, negligently. The work of God here spoken of, is the punishment of the Moabites. Moab hath been fruitful from his youth, and hath rested upon his lees, and hath not been poured out from vessel to vessel, nor hath gone into captivity, therefore his taste hath remained in him, and his scent is not changed. Therefore behold the days come, saith the Lord, and I will send him men that shall order and overturn his bottles, and they shall cast him down, and shall empty his vessels and break their bottles one against another. And Moab shall be ashamed of Chamos, as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, in which they trusted. How do you say, we are valiant, and stout men in battle? Moab is laid waste, and they have cast down her cities, and her choice young men are gone down to the slaughter, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Moab hath been fruitful, that is, rich and flourishing and hath rested upon his lees, that is, remained in its bad morals, as why not the canted has its lees mixed and remains muddy. Of Bethel, that is, of their golden calf which they worshipped in Bethel. The destruction of Moab is near to come, the calamity thereof shall come on exceeding swiftly. Comfort him, all you that are round about him, and all you that know his name, say, how is the strong staff broken, the beautiful rod? Come down from thy glory, and sit in thirst, O dwelling of the daughter of Dib, because the spoiler of Moab is come up to thee, he hath destroyed thy bulwarks. Stand in the way, and look out, O habitation of Roar, inquire of him that fleeth, and say to him that hath escaped, What is done? Moab is confounded, because he is overthrown, howl ye, and cry, tell ye it in Arnon, that Moab is wasted. And judgment is come upon the plain country, upon Helen, and upon Jossa, and upon Mephath, and upon Dib, and upon Nabo, and upon the house of Debladeham, and upon Cariadham, and upon Beth Gamel, and upon Bethman, and upon Kiriath, and upon Basra, and upon all the cities of the land of Moab, far or near. The horn of Moab is cut off, and his arm is broken, saith the Lord. The horn of Moab is cut off, that is, the strength of Moab is cut off. A metaphor drawn from animals whose strength is in their horns. Make him drunk, because he lifted up himself against the Lord, and Moab shall dash his hand in his own vomit, and he also shall be in derision. For Israel hath been a derision unto thee, as though thou hadst found him amongst thieves, for thy words therefore, which thou hast spoken against him, thou shalt be led away captive. Leave the cities, 
and dwell in the rock, you that dwell in Moab, and be ye like the dove that maketh her nest in the mouth of the hole in the highest place. We have heard the pride of Moab, he is exceeding proud, his haughtiness, and his arrogancy, and his pride, and the loftiness of his heart. I know, saith the Lord, his boasting, and that the strength thereof is not according to it, neither hath it endeavored to do according as it was able. Therefore will I lament for Moab, and I will cry out to all Moab, for the men of the brick wall that mourn. O vineyard of Sabama, I will weep for thee, with the mourning of Jazer, thy branches are gone over the sea, they are come even to the sea of Jazer, the robber hath rushed in upon thy harvest and thy vintage. Joy and gladness is taken away from Carmel, and from the land of Moab, and I have taken away the wine out of the presses, the trader of the grapes shall not sing the accustomed cheerful tune. From the cry of Hesebon even to Elil, and to Jossa, they have uttered their voice, from Sigur to Oro name, as a heifer of three years old, the waters also of Nemrim shall be very bad. And I will take away from Moab, saith the Lord, him that affreth in the high places, and that sacrificeth to his gods. Therefore my heart shall sound from Moab like pipes, and my heart a sound like pipes for the men of the brick wall, because he hath done more than he could, therefore they have perished. For every head shall be bald, and every beard shall be shaven, all hands shall be tied together, and upon every back there shall be hair cloth. Upon all the housetops of Moab, and in the streets thereof general mourning, because I have broken Moab as an useless vessel, saith the Lord. How is it overthrown, and they have howled? How hath Moab bowed down the neck, and is confounded? And Moab shall be a derision, and an example to all round about him. Thus saith the Lord, Behold he shall fly as an eagle, and shall stretch forth his wings to Moab. Kiriath is taken, and the strongholds are one, and the heart of the valiant men of Moab in the day shall be as the heart of a woman in labor. And Moab shall cease to be a people, because he hath gloried against the Lord. Fear, and the pit, and the snare come upon thee, O inhabitant of Moab, saith the Lord. He that shall flee from the fear, shall fall into the pit, and he that shall get up out of the pit, shall be taken in the snare, for I will bring upon Moab the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. They that fled from the snare stood in the shadow of Hesebon, but there came a fire out of Hesebon, and a flame out of the midst of Sion and it shall devour part of Moab, and the crown of the head of the children of tumult. Fear, that is, the sword of the enemy. The pit, that is, unforeseen calamities. The snare, that is, the ambushes laid by the enemy. Woe to thee, Moab, thou hast perished, O people of Chamos, for thy sons, and thy daughters are taken captives. And I will bring back the captivity of Moab in the last days saith the Lord, hitherto the judgments of Moab. The like desolation of Ammon, of Idumea, of the Syrians, of the Agarns, and of the Elamites. Against the children of Ammon. Thus saith the Lord, hath Israel no sons? Or hath he no heir? Why then hath Milcom inherited Gad, and his people dwelt in his cities? Therefore behold the days come, saith the Lord, and I will cause the noise of war to be heard in Rabbath of the children of Ammon, and it shall be destroyed into a heap, and her daughters shall be burnt with fire, and Israel shall possess them that have possessed him, saith the Lord. How, O Hesebon, for high is wasted! Cry, ye daughters of Rabbath, gird yourselves with hair cloth, mourn and go about by the hedges, for Malcolm shall be carried into captivity, his priests, and his princes together. Why gloriest thou in the valleys? Thy valley hath flowed away, O delicate daughter, that hast trusted in thy treasures, and hast said, Who shall come to me? Behold I will bring a fear upon thee, saith the Lord God of hosts, from all that are round about thee, and you shall be scattered every one out of one another rest sight, neither shall there be any to gather together them that flee. Malcolm, the idol of the Ammonites and afterwards I will cause the captives of the children of Ammon to return, saith the Lord. Against Edom. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Is wisdom no more in Thaman? Counsel is perished from her children, their wisdom is become unprofitable. Flee and turn your backs, go down into the deep hole, ye inhabitants of Dedan, 
for I have brought the destruction of Esau upon him, the time of his visitation. If great he gatherers had come to thee, would they not have left a bunge? If thieves in the night, they would have taken what was enough for them. But I have made Esau bare, I have revealed his secrets, and he cannot be hid, his seed is laid waste, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he shall not be. Leave thy fatherless children, I will make them live, and thy widows shall hope in me. For thus saith the Lord, Behold they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup, shall certainly drink, and shalt thou come off as innocent? Thou shalt not come off as innocent, but drinking thou shalt drink. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, and a reproach, and a desert, and a curse, and all her cities shall be everlasting wastes. I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent to the nations, gather yourselves together, and come against her, and let us rise up to battle. For behold I have made thee a little one among the nations, despicable among men. Thy arrogancy hath deceived thee, and the pride of thy heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, and endeavorest to lay hold on the height of the hill, but though thou shouldst make thy nest as high as an eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. And Edom shall be desolate, every one that shall pass by it, shall be astonished, and shall hiss at all its plagues. As Sodom was overthrown and Gomorrah, and the neighbors thereof, saith the Lord, There shall not a man dwell there, and there shall no son of man inhabit it. Behold one shall come up as a lion from the swelling of the Jordan, against the strong and beautiful, for I will make him run suddenly upon her, and who shall be the chosen one whom I may appoint over her? For who is like to me? And who shall abide me? And who is that shepherd that can withstand my countenance? Therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord, which he hath taken concerning Edom, and his thoughts which he hath thought concerning the inhabitants of Thaman. Surely the little ones of the flock shall cast them down, of a truth they shall destroy them with their habitation. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall, the cry of their voice is heard in the Red Sea. Behold he shall come up as an eagle, and fly, and he shall spread his wings over Basra. And in that day the heart of the valiant ones of Edom shall be as the heart of a woman in labor. Against Damascus. Amath is confounded and Arphad, for they have heard very bad tidings, they are troubled as in the sea, through care they could not rest. Damascus is undone, she is put to flight, trembling hath seized on her, anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in labor. How have they forsaken the city of renown, the city of joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in her streets, and all the men of war shall be silent in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall devour the strongholds of Benadad. Against Cedar and against the kingdoms of Vassar, which Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon destroyed. Thus saith the Lord, Arise, and go ye up to Cedar, and waste the children of the east. They shall take their tents, and their flocks and shall carry off for themselves their curtains, and all their vessels, and their camels, and they shall call fear upon them round about. Flee ye, get away speedily, sit in deep holes, you that inhabit us are, saith the Lord, for Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon hath taken counsel against you, and hath conceived designs against you. Against Cedar and against the kingdoms of Vassar, were parts of Arabia, which with Moab, Ammon, Edom, etc were all brought under the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar. Arise, and go up to a nation that is at ease, and that dwelleth securely, saith the Lord, they have neither gates, nor bars, they dwell alone. And their camels shall be for a spoil, and the multitude of their cattle for a booty, and I will scatter unto every wind them that have their hair cut round, and I will bring destruction upon them from all their confines, saith the Lord. And Asar shall be a habitation for dragons, desolate for ever, no man shall abide there, nor son of man inhabit it. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremy is the prophet against Elam, in the beginning of the reign of Sedisha's king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold I will break the bow of Elam, and their chief strength. Elam, a part of Persia. And I will bring upon Elam the four winds from the fear quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them into all these winds, and there shall be no nation, to which the fugitives of Elam shall not come.
and I will cause Elam to be afraid before their enemies, and in the sight of them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, my fierce wrath, saith the Lord, and will send the sword after them, till I consume them. And I will set my throne in Elam, and destroy kings and princes from thence, saith the Lord. But in the latter days I will cause the captives of Elam, to return, saith the Lord. Babylon, which hath afflicted the Israelites, after their restoration, shall be utterly destroyed. The word that the Lord hath spoken against Babylon, and against the land of the Chaldeans in the hand of Jeremy is the prophet. Declare ye among the nations, and publish it, lift up a standard, proclaim, and conceal it not, say, Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, Meridich is overthrown, their graven things are confounded, their idols are overthrown. For a nation is come up against her out of the north, which shall make her land desolate, and there shall be none to dwell therein, from man even to beast, yea they are removed, and gone away. In those days, and at that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping they shall make haste, and shall seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Sion, their faces are hitherward. They shall come, and shall be joined to the Lord by an everlasting covenant, which shall never be forgotten. Bel, Bel and Meridich were worshipped for gods by the men of Babylon. A nation, viz., the Medes. My people have been a lost flock, their shepherds have caused them to go astray, and have made them wander in the mountains, they have gone from mountain to hill, they have forgotten their resting place. All that found them, have devoured them, and their enemies said, we have not sinned in so doing, because they have sinned against the Lord the beauty of justice, and against the Lord the hope of their fathers. Remove out of the midst of Babylon, and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans, and be ye as kids at the head of the flock. For behold I raise up, and will bring against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the land of the north, and they shall be prepared against her, and from thence she shall be taken, their arrows, like those of a mighty man a destroyer, shall not return in vain. And Chaldea shall be made a prey, all that waste her shall be filled, saith the Lord. Because you rejoice, and speak great things, pillaging my inheritance, because you are spread abroad as calves upon the grass, and have bellowed as bulls. Your mother is confounded exceedingly, and she that bore you is made even with the dust, behold she shall be the last among the nations, a wilderness unpassable, and dry. Because of the wrath of the Lord it shall not be inhabited, but shall be wholly desolate, every one that shall pass by Babylon, shall be astonished, and shall hiss at all her plagues. Prepare yourselves against Babylon round about, all you that bend the bow, fight against her, spare not arrows, because she hath sinned against the Lord. Shout against her, she hath everywhere given her hand, her foundations are fallen, her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she hath done, so do to her. Destroy the sower out of Babylon, and him that holdeth the sickle in the time of harvest, for fear of the sword of the dove every man shall return to his people, and every one shall flee to his own land. Israel is a scattered flock, the lions have driven him away, first the king of Assyria devoured him, and last this Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon hath broken his bones. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, Behold I will visit the king of Babylon and his land, as I have visited the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel again to his habitation, and he shall feed on Carmel, and Basin, and his soul shall be satisfied in Mount Ephraim, and Galad. In those days, and at that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sin of Judah, and there shall none be found for I will be merciful to them, whom I shall leave. The dove, or the destroyer, for the Hebrew word signifies either the one or the other. Go up against the land of the rulers, and punish the inhabitants thereof, waste, and destroy all behind them, saith the Lord, and do according to all that I have commanded thee. A noise of war in the land, and a great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth broken, and destroyed? How is Babylon turned into a desert among the nations? I have caused thee to fall into a snare, and thou art taken, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware of it, thou art found and caught, 
because thou hast provoked the Lord. The Lord hath opened his armory, and hath brought forth the weapons of his wrath, for the Lord the God of hosts hath a work to be done in the land of the Chaldeans. Come ye against her from the uttermost borders, open that they may go forth that shall tread her down, take the stones out of the way, and make heaps, and destroy her, and let nothing of her be left. Destroy all her valiant men, let them go down to the slaughter, woe to them, for their day is come, the time of their visitation. The voice of them that flee, and of them that have escaped out of the land of Babylon, to declare in Sion the revenge of the Lord our God the revenge of his temple. Declare to many against Babylon, to all that bend the bow, stand together against her round about, and let nose escape, pay her according to her work, according to all that she hath done, do ye to her, for she hath lifted up herself against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore shall her young men fall in her streets, and all her men of war shall hold their peace in that day, saith the Lord. Behold I come against thee, O proud one saith the Lord the God of hosts, for thy day is come, the time of thy visitation. And the proud one shall fall, he shall fall down, and there shall be none to lift him up, and I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel, and the children of Judah are oppressed together, all that have taken them captives, hold them fast, they will not let them go. Their Redeemer is strong, the Lord of hosts is his name, he will defend their cause and judgment, to terrify the land, and to disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men, a sword upon her diviners, and they shall be foolish, a sword upon her valiant ones, and they shall be dismayed. A sword upon their horses, and upon their chariots and upon all the people that are in the midst of her, and they shall become as women, a sword upon her treasures, and they shall be made a spoil. A drought upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, because it is a land of idols, and they glory in monstrous things. Therefore shall dragons dwell there with the fig fawns, and ostriches shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited for ever, neither shall it be built up from generation to generation. As the Lord overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and their neighbor cities, saith the Lord, No man shall dwell there, neither shall the Son of Man inhabit it. Fig fawns, monsters of the desert, or demons in monstrous shapes, such as the ancients called fawns and satyrs, and as they imagined them to live upon wild figs, they called them fawny ficarii or fig fawns. Behold a people cometh from the north, and a great nation, and many kings shall rise from the ends of the earth. They shall take the bow and the shield, they are cruel and unmerciful, their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, like a man prepared for battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands are grown feeble, anguish hath taken hold of him, pangs as a woman in labor. Behold he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan to the strong and beautiful, for I will make him run suddenly upon her and who shall be the chosen one whom I may appoint over her? For who is like to me? And who shall bear up against me? And who is that shepherd that can withstand my countenance? Therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord, which he hath taken against Babylon, and his thoughts which he hath thought against the land of the Chaldeans, surely the little ones of the flocks shall pull them down, of a truth their habitation shall be destroyed with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon the earth is moved and the cry is heard amongst the nations. The miseries that shall fall upon Babylon from the Medes, the destruction of her idols. Thus saith the Lord, Behold I will raise up as it were a pestilential wind against Babylon and against the inhabitants thereof, who have lifted up their heart against me. And I will send to Babylon fanners, and they shall fan her, and shall destroy her land, for they are come upon her on every side in the day of her affliction. Let not him that bendeth, bend his bow, and let not him go up that is armed with a coat of mail, spare not her young men, destroy all her army. And the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and the wounded in the regions thereof. For Israel and Judah have not been forsaken by their God the Lord of hosts, but their land hath been filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. 
flee ye from the midst of Babylon, and let every one save his own life, be not silent upon her iniquity, for it is the time of revenge from the Lord, he will I render unto her what she hath deserved. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the hand of the Lord, that made all the earth drunk, the nations have drunk of her wine, and therefore they have staggered. Babylon is suddenly fallen, and destroyed, howl for her, take balm for her pain, if so she may be healed. We would have cured Babylon, but she is not healed, let us forsake her, and let us go every man to his own land, because her judgment hath reached even to the heavens, and is lifted up to the clouds. The Lord hath brought forth our justices, come, and let us declare in Sion the work of the Lord our God. Sharpen the arrows, fill the quivers, the Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, and his mind is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Upon the walls of Babylon set up the standard, strengthen the watch, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes, for the Lord hath both purposed, and done all that he spoke against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, rich in treasures, thy end is come for thy entire destruction. The Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, I will fill thee with men as with locusts, and they shall lift up a joyful shout against thee. He that made the earth by his power, that hath prepared the world by his wisdom, and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice the waters are multiplied in heaven. He lifteth up the clouds from the ends of the earth, he hath turned lightning into rain, and hath brought forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is become foolish by his knowledge, every founder is confounded by his idol, for what he hath cast is a lie, and there is no breath in them. They are vain works, and worthy to be laughed at, in the time of their visitation they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he that made all things he it is and Israel is the scepter of his inheritance, the Lord of hosts is his name. Thou dashest together for me the weapons of war, and with thee I will dash nations together, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. And with thee I will break in pieces the horse, and his rider, and with thee I will break in pieces the chariot, and him that getteth up into it, and with thee I will break in pieces man and woman, and with thee I will break in pieces the old man and the child and with thee I will break in pieces the young man and the virgin, and with thee I will break in pieces the shepherd and his flock, and with thee I will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee I will break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render to Babylon, and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil, that they have done in Sion, before your eyes, saith the Lord. Behold I come against thee, thou destroying mountain, saith the Lord which corruptest the whole earth, and I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and will roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for the corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be destroyed for ever, saith the Lord. Set ye up a standard in the land, sound with a trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kings of Ararat, many, and Asnez, Number Tafsir against her, bring the horse as the stinging locust. Prepare the nations against her, the kings of Media, their captains, and all their rulers, and all the land of their dominion. And the land shall be in a commotion, and shall be troubled, for the design of the Lord against Babylon shall awake, to make the land of Babylon desert and uninhabitable. The valiant men of Babylon have forborne to fight, they have dwelt in holds, their strength hath failed and they are become as women, her dwelling places are burned, her bars are broken. One running post shall meet another, and messenger shall meet messenger, to tell the king of Babylon that his city is taken from one end to the other, and that the fords are taken, and the marshes are burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor, this is the time of her thrashing, yet a little while and the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon hath eaten me up, he hath devoured me, he hath made me as an empty vessel, he hath swallowed me up like a dragon, he hath filled his belly with my delicate meats, and he hath cast me out. The wrong done to me, and my flesh be upon Babylon, saith the habitation of Sion, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea, 
saith Jerusalem. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold I will judge thy cause, and will take vengeance for thee, and I will make her sea desolate, and will dry up her spring. And Babylon shall be reduced to heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment and a hissing, because there is no inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions, they shall shake their manes like young lions. In their heat I will set them drink, and I will make them drunk, that they may slumber, and sleep an everlasting sleep, and awake no more, saith the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, and like rams with kids. How is Sesav taken, and the renowned one of all the earth surprised? How is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea is come up over Babylon, she is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are become an astonishment, a land uninhabited and desolate, a land wherein none can dwell, nor son of man pass through it. And I will visit against Bel in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he had swallowed down and the nations shall no more flow together to him, for the wall also of Babylon shall fall. Go out of the midst of her, my people, that every man may save his life from the fierce wrath of the Lord. And lest your hearts faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, and a rumor shall come in one year, and after this year another rumor, and iniquity in the land, and ruler upon ruler. Therefore behold the days come, and I will visit the idols of Babylon and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. And the heavens and the earth, and all things that are in them shall give praise for Babylon, for spoilers shall come to her from the north, saith the Lord. And as Babylon caused that there should fall slain in Israel, so of Babylon there shall fall slain in all the earth. You that have escaped the sword, come away, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded, because we have heard reproach, shame hath covered our faces, because strangers are come upon the sanctuaries of the house of the Lord. Therefore behold the days come, saith the Lord, and I will visit her graven things, and in all her land the wounded shall groan, if Babylon should mount up to heaven, and establish her strength on high, from me there should come spoilers upon her, saith the Lord. The noise of a cry from Babylon and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, because the Lord hath laid Babylon waste, and destroyed out of her the great voice, and their waves shall roar like many waters, their voice hath made a noise. Because the spoiler is come upon her, that is, upon Babylon, and her valiant men are taken, and their bow is weakened, because the Lord, who is a strong revenger, will surely repay. And I will make her princes drunk. And her wise men and her captains, and her rulers, and her valiant men, and they shall sleep an everlasting sleep, and shall awake no more, saith the king whose name is Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, that broad wall of Babylon shall be utterly broken down, and her high gates shall be burnt with fire, and the labors of the people shall come to nothing, and of the nations shall go to the fire, and shall perish. The word that Jeremy is the prophet commanded Sarai is the son of Narius the son of Mages, when he went with King Sadishas to Babylon, in the fourth year of his reign, now Sarai's was chief over the prophecy. And Jeremias wrote in one book all the evil that was to come upon Babylon, all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremias said to Sarai's, When thou shalt come into Babylon, and shalt see, and shalt read all these words, thou shalt say, O Lord, Thou hast spoken against this place to destroy it, so that there should be neither man nor beast to dwell therein, and that it should be desolate forever. And when thou shalt have made an end of reading this book, thou shalt tie a stone to it, and shalt throw it into the midst of the Euphrates, and thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and she shall not rise up from the affliction that I will bring upon her, and she shall be utterly destroyed. Thus far are the words of Jeremias. A recapitulation of the reign of Sedecius, and the destruction of Jerusalem. The number of the captives. Sedecius was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and the name of his mother was Amidal, the daughter of Jeremias of Labna. And he did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that Joachim had done. For the wrath of the Lord was against Jerusalem, and against Judah 
till he cast them out from his presence, and Sadishas revolted from the king of Babylon. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon came, he and all his army, against Jerusalem, and they besieged it, and built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Sedecius. And in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, a famine overpowered the city, and there was no food for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and the men of war fled, and went out of the city in the night by the way of the gate that is between the two walls, and leadeth to the king's garden, the Chaldeans besieging the city round about, sad they went by the way that leadeth to the wilderness. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king, and they overtook Sedecius in the desert which is near Jericho, and all his companions were scattered from him. And when they had taken the king, they carried him to the king of Babylon to Reblatha, which is in the land of Amath, and he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Sedecius before his eyes, and he slew all the princes of Judah in Reblatha. And he put out the eyes of Sedecius, and bound him with fetters, and the king of Babylon brought him into Babylon, and he put him in prison till the day of his death. And in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, the same as the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzardan the general of the army, who stood before the king of Babylon in Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great house he burnt with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the general broke down all the wall of Jerusalem round about. But Nebuzardan the general carried away captives some of the poor people, and of the rest of the common sword who remained in the city, and of the fugitives that were fled over to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the multitude. But of the poor of the land, Nebuzardan the general left some for vine dressers, and for husbandmen. The Chaldeans also broke in pieces the brazen pillars that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases, and the sea of brass that was in the house of the Lord, and they carried all the brass of them to Babylon. And they took the cauldrons, and the flesh hooks, and the solderies, and the bowls, and the little mortars, and all the brazen vessels that had been used in the ministry, and the general took away the pitchers, and the censers, and the pots, and the basins, and the candlesticks, and the mortars and the cups, as many as were of gold, in gold, and as many as were of silver, in silver, and the two pillars, and one sea, and twelve oxen of brass that were under the basis, which King Solomon had made in the house of the Lord, there was no weight of the brass of all these vessels. And concerning the pillars, one pillar was eighteen cubits high, and a cord of twelve cubits compassed it about, but the thickness thereof was four fingers, and it was hollow within and chapiters of brass were upon both, and the height of one chapiter was five cubits, and network, and pomegranates were upon the chapiters round about, all of brass. The same of the second pillar, and the pomegranates. And there were ninety-six pomegranates hanging down, and the pomegranates being a hundred in all, were compassed with network. And the general took Sarai as the chief priest, and Sophoni as the second priest, and the three keepers of the entry. He also took out of the city one eunuch that was chief over the men of war, and seven men of them that were near the king's person, that were found in the city, and a scribe, an officer of the army who exercised the young soldiers, and threescore men of the people of the land, that were found in the midst of the city. And Nebuzard and the general took them, and brought them to the king of Babylon, to Reblatha. And the king of Babylon struck them, and put them to death in Reblatha, in the land of Amath and Judah was carried away captive out of his land. This is the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive, in the seventh year, three thousand and twenty-three Jews. In the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, eight hundred and thirty-two souls from Jerusalem. In the three and twentieth year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuzard and the general carried away of the Jews seven hundred and forty-five souls. So all the souls were four thousand six hundred. And it came to pass in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jochen king of Judah, in the twelfth month, the five and twentieth day of the month, that evil Mridich king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jochen king of Judah, and brought him forth out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him, 
And he set his throne above the thrones of the kings that were with him in Babylon. And he changed his prison garments, and he ate bread before him always all the days of his life. And for his diet a continual provision was allowed him by the king of Babylon, every day a portion, until the day of his death, all the days of his life. <laughs> Thank you.